I'm Rebecca Ellis, and today I'm going to be addressing the top five preventive maintenance tasks for plumbing systems. Although not all encompassing, I do believe they are the most valuable. I'm gonna start with water softening. Hard water will cause scale to build up inside isolation valves you need to use for maintaining equipment. In addition, the same scale will build up inside water heaters and humidifiers, rendering them less efficient and less able to do their jobs. If you have a water softener, the main thing you need to do is keep the tank full of salt. If you don't have a water softener and you do have scaling problems, I definitely recommend investing in a softener. You may not be able to afford or it may not be practical to soften all of the water in your building. So if you need to make some choices, the top priorities would be humidifier first, domestic hot water system second, and then your cold water system. I've seen the maintenance time and cost associated with maintaining a commercial humidifier significantly reduced with the addition of a water softener. Next, I'd like to talk about water heaters. Whether you have softened water or not, it's still a good idea to flush your tank water heaters on a regular basis. Sediment will fall out of the water as it's heated and pile up in the bottom of the tank. This sediment will reduce the efficiency of your water heater, it will reduce the capacity to store hot water, and eventually it will eat through the bottom of the tank and cause a leak. The water heater operations and maintenance manuals should be very clear on how to flush your particular water heater. Be sure to follow those instructions. When you have more than one water heater lined up in parallel like we do here, you'll want to do one water heater at a time, closing the isolation valve on the other so that you're not dumping all three water heaters at the same time. So you may have a tankless boiler for your domestic hot water system. In that case, hot water enters the boiler through this pipe, goes through a series of small tubes inside the boiler and over the gas-fired flame, and then comes out of the boiler through this pipe hotter than it went in. In the process of heating the water though, scale can build up on the inside of the tubes because of the hard water coming into contact with the very high temperature metal tubes. Scale can not only reduce the efficiency of the boilers, but it can also reduce the flow of the water through the boilers. And when that happens, you can have some localized boiling of the water molecules and then collapsing back into liquid, a process called kettling. What happens when the, the water molecules go from gas to liquid, it creates a shock wave that violently shakes the boiler as well as the piping connected to it and creates an environment where a leak is likely to happen sooner than later. So it's very important to periodically run a cleaning solution through the tubes to remove the scale. However, you need to be very careful because this is drinkable domestic hot water and you can't just use any harsh chemical to clean the tubes. So refer to your boiler manufacturer's operations and maintenance manual for both the solution to use as well as the process to follow to clean the tubes. This boiler has actually been piped up to take a funnel on the discharge side of the boiler that will take the correct solution, you just dump it in the funnel, keep dumping it, and it goes through the tubes and comes out the other side of the boiler. And you just keep running the liquid through the tubes until it runs clean. The same scale that builds up inside your boilers can also build up in the rest of the piping system. It can wreak havoc on check valves, strainers, isolation valves, and essentially any piping component that has small pieces and parts or small orifices. One example is isolation valves. So this is an isolation valve to one of our domestic water boilers. The isolation valve is here to stop flow through the boilers when the boiler needs to be maintained, but you still want to have domestic water service to the building. If these valves don't close fully, you won't be able to achieve that. You'd have to shut down your whole domestic water system just to service the boiler. If you also have some valves that are closed most of the time and you open them periodically for maybe seasonal or special operations, 
If you let them sit for a long time, scale could build up to the point where you can't even open it. And that also defeats the purpose of having the valve. I recommend that you exercise isolation valves at least once a year from being closed to open, back to closed, and maybe cycle it three or four times because not only will it ensure that that valve is seeing the full motion, it'll also help break off any scale that started to collect on it. And if you have particularly hard water, you may need to do that more frequently. It's not just isolation valves and equipment that need to be exercised regularly. In plumbing systems, especially large facilities, it's desirable to be able to isolate certain sections of piping for service while maintaining water delivery to the rest of the building. I'm here at two isolation valves, one hot and one cold, serving risers in a high-rise building. There are 20 other similar risers like this served off the same plumbing mains. The purpose of the isolation valves is to be able to close just these risers, drain down the water, and service the equipment. If these valves don't hold water tight, it may be necessary to drain down and interrupt service to all of the fixtures in the building in order to service one or two on this riser. That's why it's important to exercise these valves at least annually to make sure you have the full range of motion and that you have an opportunity to break off any scale or debris that may be building up on the inside. Similarly, in large domestic hot water systems, you'll also find balancing valves. These are located in the hot water recirculation pipes, and they also need to be exercised regularly. Balancing valves are very susceptible to clogging because they have very small pieces and parts internally which will collect scale and debris. A clogged balancing valve will result in waiting a long time for hot water to be delivered to different fixtures served by the system. When exercising balancing valves though, it's very important to understand that they are set at a certain position and those are typically marked on the head of the balancing valve. So you need to know what position they're at before you exercise them because at the end of opening and closing them a few times, you want to make sure you put them back exactly where you found them. Strainers are a key element of any piping system and they're designed to remove debris from the water before that water reaches sensitive equipment downstream. In this case, this is a strainer that's upstream of an electronic mixing valve. Cold water comes into the strainer and any debris, whether it's scale or products of corrosion or anything that's gotten in the water system, it gets diverted into this leg of the strainer and only clean water is allowed to pass through into the mixing valve downstream. So as designed, the strainer is intended to collect debris, but it can only hold so much. So once the strainer is full, it will start passing debris into the equipment that you're trying to protect. So it's very important to clean the strainers on a regular basis to make sure that they can continue to collect debris. And it's extremely easy. All you need to do is put a hose on the end of the strainer, open this valve, and let the system water push all the debris out through the hose and into a floor drain or a bucket that you may want to collect it in. Once it's running clear, you can close the valve and you're basically back to a new strainer and your equipment will remain protected for a while longer. These strainers are actually upstream of an electronic mixing valve which takes cold domestic hot water and very hot domestic hot water, combines them together into the perfect temperature water for your fixtures in the building. So it's very sensitive equipment and that's why both the hot and the cold water coming into the mixing valves have strainers. You may be more familiar with an old-fashioned mechanical thermostatic mixing valve in your building and those are just as sensitive to debris so even they need a strainer on every pipe going into them. If your domestic hot water system has a heat exchanger, especially a plate and frame heat exchanger like we see here, they'll be very susceptible to clogging. And that's because the plate and frame heat exchanger inside this box is a series of parallel metal plates that are very close to each other with channels through which the two water streams pass. Heating hot water flows one direction, the domestic water flows the other, and heat transfers between one and the other. 
It's in those little channels between the plates that scale and debris can build up and cause clogging. And a clogged heat exchanger is a useless heat exchanger. If this heat exchanger were to clog up, it would cause both domestic hot water flow and temperature control problems. It's very important to back flush these heat exchangers on a regular basis. But to do that without having to shut down your entire domestic hot water system, you'll need to have a good set of isolation valves and drain valves at every piping connection to the heat exchanger. And through a series of positioning isolation valves, opening drains, and letting water flow through the heat exchangers, you can remove that scale as it builds up. The frequency that you do that is going to depend on how hard your water is. Sometimes you can get away with only doing it once a year. Other times you may need to do it every month or two. Thanks for watching our top five preventive maintenance tasks for plumbing systems.